Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm doing the Project Panner tag. This was originally created by Sarah Rose, who I am subscribed to, and for some reason I didn't see this in my subscription feed. So I first saw this tag when it was done by Christina Chang. So I'm going to have both of their videos and both of their channels linked down below. This seemed like a lot of fun to do. I don't think I've done any particular, maybe one or two tags specified on project panning, and definitely not anything recently, at least in 2020. So I thought it'd be fun. We have 10 questions here, and let's just jump in. Question number one is, how long have you been project panning? I started my first project pans at the very beginning of 2018. So since then, I've done quite a few seasonal projects, a couple collab projects. I've done a Pan That Palette every year since 2018. I love Pan That Palette. I think that's like my favorite project that I've done for panning. Question number two is what made you decide to start panning? What did you hope to get out of it? I really just wanted to learn more about myself and the way I used makeup. And the best way I think to do that is to pan something. Because when you pan a palette, when you pan a foundation, when you pan a full product, you spend a lot of time with it. And you really get to know what you like, what you don't like about it, and that helps inform your own preferences. You, you understand what works best for your skin, and that really helps you, moving forward, make more informed decisions on what you want to buy. So that's really what I wanted to get out of it. I really wanted to learn more about makeup, about how my skin works with makeup, how I like my makeup, and to just be more informed when I go back and I want to buy more. What am I looking for? What do I want to get out of this product? Question number three is, how do you like to structure your project pans? Do you like short seasonal projects, year-long rolling projects, or something else? So personally, like I said, my favorite is the Pan That Palette, which is a year-long project. In 2019, I did a 9 pan 19, which for me, it was too much because I got to the point where I was panning a full face of makeup. And so I didn't have room to wiggle and experiment and try other things in my collection. I, I didn't like that. So what I like are one year long project, which for me is a project pan, project pan, duh, which for me is a pan that palette. And I like seasonal projects to go along with it. I'm actually, so I'm doing one like unofficially right now, now that we're in quarantine. Um, I'm really reaching for the foundations, the concealers, the powders that really don't work for me as well through a full day to use them up because I'm, I'm here at home. No one's seeing me unless it's through like a low quality webcam for work. So I, I'm trying more bright, bold eye looks. I'm trying to use up the foundations that don't work as well for me, but I didn't want to get rid of. So I don't think I'm going to make a project out of it just because we're kind of already in the middle of it. But uh, check out my monthly Shop My Stash videos because that's where I'll really be talking about that and my experience with those products. Question number four is, what are your favorite ways to track your progress? I think it's it's easier when you have powder products because it's so satisfying to hit pan or expand the pan because it's the easiest way to show progress, right? For foundations, it's a bit more difficult, but I, I just, I love finishing a product. If it's not um, a powder product, I like scooping out. I've got like a little spatula that I use. I like scooping out the product and when it's fully empty, getting rid of it. Uh, for me, I I'm not as hardcore of a panner where I will mark the bottle, like, you know, where I see progress, but I really like seeing pan. I think my favorite way to do to see progress is in my powder products when I see pan or expand the pan or finish the pan. Question number five is, what products have been the easiest for you to pan? I, I would say face powders. The I mean, I use them every day. I do like setting my face every day, so I go through those like that. <laughs> Question number six is, what products have been the hardest for you to pan? Blush. I tried to pan a blush, and I'll put my 9 Pan 19 playlist up in the cards if you missed that last year, but I was not prepared to pan a blush, especially one that took that long. I tried to pan a blush trio, which I think was also an issue. I probably should have just stuck to one. <laughs> But like halfway through the year, I gave up and picked just one pan to try and hit pan on. And I finally did it. I think I have a whole video where it's like it took me 260 something days to hit pan on a blush. And I was not ready for that. So I think blush is probably the hardest thing for me to pan. Question number seven is, are there any types of products that you rarely or never put in a project pan? 
I would say lipsticks. Liquid, bullet, whatever. I have never really wanted to try and pan a lipstick. I like having the variety, the options. And for me, it's difficult because I always pair my lip to what I'm wearing on my eye. So if like today, like I've got a really bold look, I just have chapstick on. That's it. I would do a nude lip or a gloss. That's it. So I feel like if I were to pan a lipstick, it would really, really limit what I could do on the rest of my face. And so I've never really wanted to ever pan a lipstick. Question number eight is, do you pan skincare or body care or strictly makeup? You know what? I would say like for the rest of my, I guess, beauty regimen, I just pan things naturally. I don't really have as big of a collection. Maybe not hair care. I think I have a lot of hair care products, but I don't have as big of a collection. And so I don't tend to really need to do that because I tend to just use products, finish them up, get my new ones. For skincare, I have a little container back here. I have a couple of backups for products that I use daily, like my rosehip seed oil, my face wash, my like kind of go-to things like that. But it's never really a, I guess, uh, what am I trying to say? I don't intentionally pan them. I just use them up. Like for me, skincare is just a normal thing, like an upkeep thing that I do daily. So I'm not going to put a skincare product in a product pan because I know I'm already going to use that up because I use it daily, you know? So that's kind of how I view hair care and skincare. It's a little bit different than makeup. Question number nine is, what is your number one advice for a successful project pan? For me, I would say you need to pick a product that you like. Nothing is worse than hate panning a product. Now it might, that might be like working with a product that you didn't like at first and you found a way to make it work for you. That could definitely work. But if it's a product that you've used for a few weeks or even a few months and it's not working and you hate it and you hate reaching for it every day, you're not going to use it up. At that point, you just need to declutter it. For me, a good example of the opposite would be the shimmers in my blood sugar palette, my Panda palette for 2020. I really didn't like them at first, couldn't get them to work for me, but I worked with them, I got some advice from the community in my channel, and I found two ways to actually make those shimmers work in a way that I love them now. So now I can use them, and I'm probably not going to have any issue panning them. So I think you need to give products that maybe at first try you didn't like, give them a good honest try. But if like weeks and weeks later you're still not liking them, get rid of them. Because hate panning a product. I mean, in my experience, is not enjoyable. It's not fun. And it's not going to help you pan something because the way I see panning is you're supposed to learn just to enjoy the process. You can't enjoy the process if you're hating the product you're pulling out every day. And last but not least, question number 10 is, has panning affected your makeup purchasing habits? If so, how? Yes. Yes, it has. And that's exactly what I wanted to get out of this. So uh, panning foundations and concealers really helped me learn and understand what I'm looking for in a foundation, what I'm looking for in a concealer. So I know for foundation, I like medium satin finish foundations, sometimes matte in the summer. I know I've got certain foundations that I know I go back to every summer because I need that in the summer. And in the winter, I go to certain foundations in the winter because I know that's what I'm looking for in the winter. And I never really would have understood that if I hadn't spent as much time with the products as I did. For concealers, I like a full coverage concealer under my eyes and I have plenty of good go-to products that I know work for me year round. And I'm not wearing them today because I'm in quarantine. I'm using up products that don't work as well for me, but they still look decent. But now I know, and I've got options too. I don't just go for higher end or lower end. I like having a good go-to higher end and lower end product. Like my favorite concealers, I have a dollar concealer over here and I've got like a, what is it? It's the Pat McGrath one. So it's like a $36 concealer. So I've got both ends of the spectrum covered there too. So I would say panning has really helped me just think more about products. I'm not just going out and buying everything because it looks cool or because someone talked about it. I'm actually sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, so this is what I like in a foundation. This is what I'm looking for in a foundation. How is this foundation described? Let me read the ingredients. Let me read the description. Is this something that would work for me? And that's how I pick products. And I feel like that is really how we as a community need to approach 
makeup and approach products because I feel like I think it's getting better now but I think like at the height of this in like 2018 everyone was just buying everything because it was on YouTube and because the influencers were promoting it and because XYZ. I feel like we're getting better but there's still more room to improve. I still have room to improve. I still sometimes impulse buy products <laughs> so I'm not perfect but I'm working on it and panning has 100% helped there. So that is everything in this tag. Thank you so much Sarah Rose for creating this tag. I had a lot of fun with it and if anyone is watching this, if you are a project panner, please do this tag. I would love to see your video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.